Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to share with you how you can make a sugar-free, creamy cheesecake. Now, I don't usually make a lot of cheesecake on a low-carb diet, mostly because I've had a hard time getting the crust to taste like crust. It's always tasted like melted butter and almond flour. But I took somebody's advice to add a little bit of cinnamon, and that was a total game changer. So for my crust, I've got some almond flour, melted butter, granular sweetener, and a little bit of cinnamon. I do have a springform pan. I'm using a 7-inch springform pan with a little bit of uh, nonstick cooking spray and parchment paper on the bottom. Then I'm going to press my crust into the bottom of the pan and try to go up the edges of the pan a little bit. Then I'm going to bake it in the oven at 350 for about 6 to 8 minutes. In a separate bowl, I am adding together my cheesecake filling mixture. I've got some cream cheese and a little bit of sour cream. Now, before we go any further, please make sure that all of your ingredients are room temperature. This is going to help make sure that everything blends together nice and evenly and you don't get those ugly little lumps in your cheesecake filling. So after I've blended my cream cheese and sour cream, I'm adding in a powdered sweetener. I highly recommend using powdered sweetener so that you don't get those grains of the sweetener in your cheesecake filling. Then I'm also adding in a couple of eggs, a little bit of lemon juice, and some vanilla extract before blending everything together. Now I've got my crust out of the oven and the edges of it should be nice and golden, but not overly cooked. It's still going to cook once we put it back in the oven for an additional 40 to 45 minutes. So please don't burn your crust. This is how awesome it looks. Enjoy. Let's make the best keto slash low carb sugar free brownies I have ever made. I shared a recipe with you all before, but you can forget all about that one. This is where the money is. So we're going to start with our wet ingredients first. I melted some sugar free chocolate and some butter, mixed it together, added my eggs one at a time with my hand mixer and some vanilla extract. Then I slowly incorporated my dry ingredients. As always, the recipe will be listed in the comments below for you guys. You can use a spoon or a spatula to mix everything together, but it's going to get pretty thick, so use those electric appliances where you can. Um, this was the regular brownie version, which I paired with Rebel Brand's salted caramel ice cream and topped with some chocolate ganache. But I wanted to make a twisted brownie, and so I made a cheesecake slash cream cheese topping filling to add to it, and I had to pair it with some of my sugar-free caramel sauce. This was the best. Y'all, these cookies are only like two net carbs each, so you could definitely eat like six or more, and I will not tell anybody. So these cookies are like the copycat Sandy's recipe okay it is low carb and keto friendly you only need four ingredients how about that so you're going to cream together some butter and some granular sweetener i'm using some uh monk fruit excuse me monk fruit uh granular sweetener it's zero carbs i added a splash of vanilla and then i slowly incorporated in my almond flour and once i got that sandy cookie dough consistency i was ready to go ahead and form my cookies i did use a cookie scoop scooped it into my hand, smashed it, and then just like gently rounded the edges into the shape that I wanted. This recipe does not rise much at all, so just make sure that you're shaping your cookies into how you want them to look. So while those were baking, I crushed up some pecans because I'm gonna top mine with this Lily's cinnamon chocolate flavor chip. I mean, doesn't that just sound delicious? So anyway, I melted them and just dipped my cookies into it and then I topped them with pecans. But you can do so many designs, you guys. It is such a good Okay, we are finally getting to this zucchini chocolate cake you guys have been blowing me up for the recipe for on Instagram, even though it's already been posted for you guys once before. But anyways, this is a better version of it because honestly, it's a thicker cake and it just looks better in my opinion. Same exact ingredients, but let's get to it. So all you're going to need is some coconut flour, cocoa powder, granular sweetener, baking soda, and baking powder. Mix your dry ingredients together and then we're going to add in our wet ingredients, which is shredded zucchini. And don't you dare don't you dare drain that zucchini we want this moist that is the whole point of this chocolate cake is to have moist cake so shredded zucchini undrained eggs coconut oil 
and then we're gonna add in some unsweetened coconut milk and you're gonna mix everything together until it looks like this delicious cake batter and go ahead and throw it in your cake pans and throw it in the oven I'm using two six inch cake pans the last time I made it I used a nine inch cake pan so either one works just be mindful of your cooking time if you're using a smaller or bigger pan um, I cook mine here at 350 for about 35 minutes before they were finally done anyways we're getting to our frosting here which is only two ingredients you're only gonna need some sugar-free chocolate chips and some coconut cream and if you don't want to spend five dollars on a can of coconut cream at the store I got you with the hack it's on this previous video you're welcome then when your cakes have cooled you're just gonna add your frosting however you like and girl it is so delicious you will love this devil's food cake. So y'all, I have a bunch of like random ingredients in my pantry that I don't know what I'm gonna do with yet, but I was in the mood for some peanut butter cookies and I thought, well, let's throw in some pumpkin seeds and maybe some sunflower seeds. Okay, I thought it was weird, but it was totally delicious and worth it. So I've got some unsweetened peanut butter in a bowl. I added my pumpkin seeds, my sunflower seeds. Then I also added in some powdered sweetener, vanilla extract, a little bit of melted butter. And when I mixed everything together, I was like, mm, these are cookies we definitely need some chocolate chips so I added in some dark chocolate and milk chocolate sugar-free chips and then I added in a little bit of coconut flour just to kind of help that dough dry up a little bit coconut flour is super absorbent so it does the job but if you don't like this you can add whatever nuts whatever chocolate chips you want uh, this is so so good you guys the peanut butter really makes it but you'll enjoy it. I am obsessed with this peanut butter bar recipe it's only a few ingredients, but y'all, I would trade my Reese's for these all day, any day of the week. I'm just saying. So in a large bowl, I have 15 ounces of no sugar added peanut butter and one stick of butter, and I melted it in the microwave and whisked everything together. Then I added in one cup of granular sweetener. I am using a monk fruit sweetener here, but I'm adding one cup at a time and whisking in between so that I eliminate any lumps. Then I add in one teaspoon of vanilla, um, I only had French vanilla, sorry y'all, but stick to the vanilla extract. You don't need the French vanilla blend. Um, and then in a square dish, I've just lined it with some plastic wrap. You can use parchment too. And then I added my peanut butter mixture and I'm going to pop it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. I'm going to melt some sugar-free chocolate and smear it over the top and then put it back in the fridge until it sets together. But then I just break it up into little pieces and now you can see why. I don't know about y'all, but I love a fried sweet snack. These are strawberry cheesecake samosas, and here's how I made it. In a bowl, I've got my cream cheese, granular sweetener, beaten eggs, vanilla extract, and a little bit of graham cracker flavoring, just to kind of give it that cheesecake taste. I'm adding in some diced strawberries and some strawberry extract with a pinch of salt to give it a really strong punch of strawberries. I mixed mine together with my hand mixer and just made sure that all of those thick lumps were taken care of. Now here's how you're going to make the samosa. Cut a tortilla in half and basically just roll it into a cone shape with a little bit of egg wash and it will adhere to itself so easy. I filled mine up about two thirds of the way and then just sealed it with some more egg wash. Just be careful you don't fill it up all the way because it'll ooze out really easily. But once I fried them for a couple minutes, this is what they look like and y'all.
I love these white chocolate covered pecan clusters. They're only two ingredients, some sugar-free white chocolate and pecan halves. So I melted my chocolate and then I added as many pecans as I wanted. Just keep in mind, you only want to add in enough pecans so that they're coated evenly and that they stick together once you start to form your clusters. Then you let it sit up in the fridge for about 10 or 15 minutes and they're so easy and delicious. You'll wonder why you haven't tried it before.